Recording. There we go. OK. Uh, so at this point, right, we wanted to do some new things on this leg, right? We kind of really, last time, we really just kind of created a cube in its own object, right? Um, if you need to rename these, right, you don't have to, but if you want to, which is never a bad idea, you can actually go to the outliner up here, right? And you'll see there's cube and cube dot zero zero one. Not exactly terribly descriptive, right? But if you want to, you can actually double left click, right? Remember, double left click in edge mode selects an edge loop. But if I double left click in the outliner, which is this menu right here, right? If I double left click on cube, you see how I can now type in a name? And I can just call this tabletop. Enter. And then, of course, I can go to the cube 001, double left click on that, and I can call this table legs. There we go. So you can actually rename those, right? Do you have to? No, you saw we were able to model on with the default names. It's just as you're going, it's kind of nice organizationally to have an actual name that's descriptive of what it is, <laughs> right? So that way, if you have to use Outliner, you go, oh, those are table legs, oh, that's tabletop, right? So just double left click on it in Outliner, and you can name it. Hit Enter when you're done. All right. Of course, you see I've got the mirror modifier on it, right? That's the blue wrench, because this is our properties menu. We went to add modifier, uh, mirror, right? Uh, I'll get to show you some add-on stuff a little bit later on this week, right? Um, but at this point, remember, we have a couple of other quickies, and these will eventually be on our, our uh, mini quizzes also, uh, next week in particular, because we only have one more mini quiz this week since we had the holiday. Uh, and that'll be scale tool, right? That'll be Thursdays. Uh, remember, we have a mode up here, right? Right up here, right below file, edit, render, there's edit modes on. But remember, there's two top modes here. We're going to go over some of the other modes, like sculpt mode and texture mode later on, right? But there's object mode and edit mode, which is four and, of course, one. If I go to four for object mode, you'll notice I could left click on these different objects. You see how it selects the different object from the outliner? And then, of course, we can go to edit mode. Uh, by default, one is edit mode, but it's edit mode vertex or point, right? Two is edge, which is the line between points. And three is face, which is actually a polygon. Right? A couple of other things to remember. Edit preferences, because I know a couple of you guys uh, uh, last week were like, oh, that helps a lot, right? You didn't have the uh, industry compatible on. Remember, if you forgot to at the very beginning of class, or the very beginning, first time you installed Blender, you might have forgotten to change shortcuts to industry compatible. The nice thing is you're not stuck, right? It's not like, oh, man, you could just you could change it when you need it, right? So remember, you just kind of go uh, edit, preferences, and then click on key map, go up here and switch from Blender to industry compatible, right? Because I prefer that, and I think there's a lot of good reasons in terms of it's uh, better for ergonomically, it's better muscle memory wise um, than a lot of the, the blend, uh, Blender shortcuts defaults. Um, it also is much more in line with the rest of software out there. Uh, so for us, we want key map, and we want to click on this pull down up here and make sure industry compatible is on, right? Also remember window. Save screenshot. This is the preferred way to do progress check screenshots, right? If you have to take a picture with your phone, that's OK. I will accept that. But the ideal is window, save screenshot. And you'll notice I have it up on the board there, right? So that's the preferred way. I figure it never hurts to get to see those in video form again, right? <laughs> so really what I wanted to do today is just do more with the legs, right? Right now, kind of they're straight, and that's fine. But what if we want them to be more dynamic, more curved, right? This is a fantasy table, so we can have them kind of be arched out. And this also really allows me to show you shaping stuff, right? Uh, you also remember I do have uh, my mirror modifier on, and I have both X and Y on, right? Because that gives us the symmetry for both this side and this side. So that if I select one face here, it selects it on all the other legs. One of the things we could do is... If we want to start to shape this better, we can actually rotate or add loops and stuff like that. So we're going to see really just adding some loops, moving and rotating, do some shaping. So remember, we have a loop cut tool, right? Also remember, we're in modeling workspace, right? 
uh, we, usually when you're modeling, you want to be in modeling workspace. It's one of these tabs up here, right? So modeling workspace. And remember, there's a tool right down here called loop cut. There is a quick key for it, Alt-C, right? C for cat, Alt-C. So I'm going to click on loop cut, but it is that one right there. And what I need to do is I need to add in more loops here to allow me to do more shaping. Now, remember, by default, if you just loop uh, cut, right, it'll actually put it right in the middle. But remember, this is also based off of which edge you're over, right? And it's based on going perpendicular. In fact, this is one of the reasons why loop cut really likes quads. And one of the reasons uh, that we really like using quad polygons, right, is because loop cut only goes to the opposite edge predictably, right? And that means that these two edges right here are adjacent to this one. That means there's only one opposite edge right here. So this knows how to always predictably wrap and add a whole loop, right? Remember, an edge loop is really a loop of edges, right? A loop is like a rubber band or a hula hoop, right? It's just a complete circle. But it's a loop made of edges, and edges are the lines between points. If this model is made of a bunch of triangles or a bunch of n-gons, right? Remember, an n-gon is a polygon with five or more vertices. With a triangle, you have no opposite edge, so it usually stops and doesn't do anything. Um, or it'll just kind of see both as opposite edges and try to kind of flip a coin which way it wants to go. Same thing with an n-gon, right? It can kind of say, hey, these two are touching the edge of over directly, right? In this case, I want to put this loop this way anyways. Uh, but it still have at least two other choices, right? So loop cut works way more predictably, and in many software, works on quads, right? So we really prefer quads most of the time when we're modeling. So remember, this loop cut tool always goes perpendicular to the edge you're over, right? And when you move to different edges, particularly when you're over that edge, you see how that yellow uh, kind of loop edge loop pops up. All right. So in this case, I'll just left click, and it puts it right in the center. Now, if I want to, I could left click drag and drag it, right? So you're not stuck always having to put it in the middle. You can just hold down left mouse button, right? Left click drag and put it wherever you want to, right? And you notice as long as the loop cuts on, you can keep go adding edge loops, right? But it's always going perpendicular. So I'm over these edges because I want to put edge loops in this way. Now, usually the last edge loop you put in will be selected for you already, right? So what I could start to do is things like move this, right? W, right? Remember, we kind of already had that quiz last week, W for move. Remember, it is right here, though. Our selection tool, Q, W for move, E for rotate, which is today's quiz, right? E for rotate tool, R for scale. That'll be Thursday's mini quiz. But move tool right there, W. And remember, this brings up this manipulator handle, particularly if you have industry compatible on. And what I could do is I could either just grab it on the green and the blue, right? Left click drag to kind of move it out. Maybe blue to move it up a little bit or down, depending on what we want to do. I could grab the red square. And you'll notice that'll move along two axes at the same time. It's kind of up to you what you want to do, though. But I want this table to kind of start to kind of arc out, right? And it, generally, it's not enough to just move something. Generally, this shape is kind of bending. And so if you're creating a bending form, it's not enough just to move. You also want to rotate so that those edge loops kind of start to bend with it, right? Obviously, on a table, there's not much in the way of complicated edge loops because it's a table. <laughs> but you do want to kind of make sure that your sh edge loop shape is following the flow of the shape that you're making, right? As we build more complicated models, particularly our spaceship later in the term, we're really going to dive into that much more. That's one of the reasons why that's our more advanced project for the term, right? So I'm going to hit E for rotate, right? E for rotate. It's right here, though. Remember, the particularly if you're modeling workspace, it's all right there. E for rotate. And you notice this brings up its own handles that line up with the Cartesian coordinate system, right? X, Y, Z, even the view rotate. But in this case, I'll kind of stay to the more uh, precise ones. 
So if I left click drag on the red, so I can kind of bend it a little bit to kind of fit that flow better. Now in this case, I do want to make some adjustments to these legs also. Remember, there is a click key for selecting edge loops, right? Double left click. And in this case, we're two for edge mode, right? But remember, once you're in edit mode up here, you have buttons, vertex, edge, face. But of course, there's click keys for that. One for vertex edit mode, two for edge edit mode, three for face edit mode. So go to edge mode. And if you double left click, right, that's the left mouse button, the one that's under your index finger. So if I double left click on an edge, it'll select the edge loop. And what I could do is I could rotate that a little bit on the red. W for move to move it down a little bit, and I could bring this down and back maybe a bit more. And you said that's kind of bending to follow the shape a little bit better. And then, of course, I could double left click on this edge to select that edge loop. Move that back a little bit, and you see how by just kind of adding a few edge loops in here, we could start to get some cool shape. And of course, these could come in a little bit, right? Double left click to select, move that in. You see how you can get this little arch going? Now, in this case, I kind of want this part of the leg to move forward a little bit. Remember, there is three for face mode. Right? Remember, if you're in edit mode, there is a face mode right here, right? Vertex, edge, face. So there are buttons, right? I'm trying to constantly repeat the click keys for you. We're going to do mini quizzes on them, but you know, we've just started this term, so we're still learning those things. But remember, there are, right here, that is that, you'll see edit mode or object mode. It's this little pull down right here. The top two modes are the ones we want to use. Edit mode is where we can go to vertex, edge, or face. The face is the last one. Three is the click key for that. And so, of course, I could left click on that face, move it forward a bit. If I want to, I could even hit E for rotate, maybe rotate it just a little bit so it's got a little bit more of a bend that direction. Kind of depends on the leg you want to make. And I feel like I could kind of get myself maybe a little bit more roundness here. So I can always go back to loop cut. And I could always put left click to put an edge loop here, and then maybe left click to put one more edge loop there. W for move, right? And I could always move it back a little bit and down a little bit. Maybe hit E for rotate to rotate it a little bit. Double left click, right? Remember, we're in edge mode, two for edge mode. If you double left click on an edge, it'll select the edge loop. W for move, right? And you see I could go back here and I could double left click on these to move them. And you see how it gets a little bit more rounded? Maybe rotate that up a bit. We're just kind of adjusting this in multiple views, right? You see how I'm kind of adjusting it from a couple of different views, double left click, just to kind of get more shape in there. I'm going to hit Control S for save, right? But now you see that this was just really an exercise in showing you how to put some loop cuts in. And by adding more edge loops, you see how we can get more of this rounded shape. But also, you notice how we moved and rotated to kind of create some shape, right? So you move, rotate, and eventually scale tools allow you to do a lot of shaping on this leg. In fact, if I wanted to make the bottom bigger, Right, three for face mode. Select that face. R for scale, right? That's gonna be Thursday's quick key, R for scale, but it is this tool. Now, middle mouse button will do uniform scale, but I can also just grab kind of the uh, outside circle here, the white circle. And you see how it scales all three at the same time? And that just made that whole bottom a bit bigger, a bit wider than the rest of it, right? So remember, even scale tool can be used to shape with. So a big part of what I want to do with the leg was just show you more about putting loop cuts in. And to start to get you guys to see that you could select faces or edges or edge loops and use move, rotate, and scale to create shape. Now, just to kind of finish this off, I'm going to bevel it. But I don't really want to bevel every edge, right? So remember, two for edge mode. Are these, these buttons right up here, though, because we're already in edit mode. 
If you want, you can just hit Q at the very top when you go back to your regular select tool. And I could double left click on this edge. Remember, shift adds to selections. So I could shift double left click on this edge. And then I could shift double left click on this edge and then shift double left click on this edge. And we can easily go to our bevel tool right here, right? So it's bevel. We saw this already in our previous lectures, bevel tool. In this case, the active tool is kind of set to select box, so we should see the yellow. Left click drag to kind of bevel it, and you see how it kind of takes that, those edge loops and it splits them into two new edge loops. The moment I let go, you'll notice that there is this little bevel menu down here. I can click on this to open it up, and if I want to play with width some more, I can. Right, width. But I could also add segments just by left click dragging on that to give myself a little bit in terms of segments. And that just bevels those corners, right? It makes those corners rounded off. And I'll just hit Q to kind of turn that off there so the bevel's off. Four for object mode. Uh, we'll talk about smoothing the normal directions out later on. But you'll notice now our legs are a lot more dynamic. All right. Uh, and that's where I wanted to leave off on our new lecture for today. All right. So I'm going to turn off the recording.